Hello guys, welcome to another video. In recent videos, we talked about UI view representable, UI view controller representable, and in most of the videos, we have talked about views as protocols. All those things are protocols. But what is actually a protocol in Swift? Okay, so let's take time today to explore in detail what are protocols in Swift language. My name is Pete. And this, this is Swift and Tips. Okay, let's answer the first question. What are protocols? If you came from other languages like Java, C Sharp, or Python, you may hear about interfaces. Well, that's what a protocol is. More specific, protocols are the description of properties and actions that an object can do. Apple says that a protocol is like a blueprint of properties, methods, and other requirements that suit a particular task or piece of functionality. However, I like to explain protocols in this way. You're a human that inherits genetic information from your parents. You can have just two parents. However, you will fulfill many roles in your life. You can be a student, a worker, a client in a shoes store, or pay your taxes. But you don't have any restriction about the roles you can be in life. These roles are actually what we can define as your protocols. And you can see your human characteristic has subclassing. Let's jump now to Xcode and see how we can play with protocols. All right, let's start creating our first protocol. That's it. Actually, this is the basic definition of a protocol. You don't have to add any property or method yet. And any class, struct, or enum can confirm this protocol. So let's add a struct and a class to see how we can do that. As you can see, classes can inherit from other classes just one, and also classes can confirm uh, from a protocol, but in this case, structs can only confirm from protocols. Yeah, it cannot inherit from other structs. Uh, it's the same case for enums. We already talked about that in the structs versus classes video. I will leave you a link in the description. But also, the cool thing here is that uh, structs and classes, and enums too, can confirm as many protocols as needed. So let's add another protocol just to see that. Yeah, as you can see, we have two protocols in classes and struct. So yeah, this is pretty cool. So you can add as many protocols as you need it for any kind of data we have in Swift. Okay, let's see now how to add properties to our protocols. There's no specific declaration if we need a store property or a completed property. The only thing we have to do is inform the protocol that property will require a getter or a setter, or both. So let's see that in action. Let's create a protocol player with name, score, nickname, and a static property about number of players. Okay, let's explore this in detail. First, we have a name property that is a string and it contains a getter and a setter. If you don't specify setter here, then you won't be able to modify this variable later. So it's the case for score and nickname. As you can see here, this is a read-only variable. And normally, these kind of variables are related to a computer property because they are read-only. And we have number of players that contains a getter and setter, but also contains a static keyword, which means that this variable is related to a global context in, well, the future struct or class that we will require to implement here, okay? So let's create a struct in this particular case to see that protocol in action. This error is reflecting that this struct 
is not confirming this protocol properly. The only thing we have to do is just pressing here and press fix button and boom. Yeah, we auto complete all these variables here in our struct. And here we have an issue because this is a static property. So the only thing we have to do for this particular case is just setting a default value. Let's set one and that's it. For the rest of variables, well, for name is straightforward. You can modify this later or in the initializer, but let's see an example here. Both of these properties are read only. So let's create one has a store property and let's create another one has a computer property. Let's use nickname has a computer property. Okay, there we go. So now nickname is forced just to be reflected as bit in this case. And score will be initialized, but once it's done, we won't be able to change the score anymore. Now let's create a new struct object and see what happens. Let's try to modify the name here. And this is valid. Great, let's see what happened with the score. Okay, looks normal, why? We haven't seen any issue. Why this is possible? Well, this is because in this case, we are accessing person's variable. This person's property is marked as bar, so this allows us to change the value anytime, okay? But in the requirement of the protocol, that's an early story. That's something really important for you to understand. In this case, we have this condition to see that this is an read only. If we treat this as a player object, okay? We will see that in a later example. But yeah, just remember that the only requirement here is that this thing should be readable, okay? So if you, for example, keep this private, You will see an issue because this score variable is not accessible outside of person and the requirement says that it should be. So yeah, that's one important thing for you to understand is one thing is the accessibility with person. Okay. And other one is about player. Keep that in mind. Talking about protocols is a long topic and we will spend a lot of time here. What do you think if we continue in the next one? Let's talk later about methods and continue with a series of videos, short videos about protocols. That's it for now. And I really like to say thank you everybody to support me with your likes and your subscriptions. Let's continue in a few days. And for now, have a great day.